Huff. If you'll give him a welcome, uh, Dr. Braden. Well, thank you very much. Thank you to our families that are here to learn a little bit more about the three-tiered uh, bus system proposal that we have. Um, the format for tonight, uh, we will be able to present to you uh, a presentation that we presented to the board. It has a few changes in it. We added a little bit more detail um, than what we presented the last time uh, based on some of the feedback that we have received. And so I would expect that the presentation and everything, probably 35 minutes or so. Following that presentation, we also have been collecting emails. We've, been, we've put out a survey. We've collected that information. And we've been able to uh, categorize uh, everything into certain themes um, that have popped up. And so we want to address that in sort of a, a Q&A based on the information that we have received. Uh, we also have um, note cards uh, that you have received. Um, if you have additional questions that relate specifically to you or uh, to, as a whole um, in Pender County Schools when it comes to the proposal, we certainly want to give you the attention that, that you deserve. And uh, if you'll put your name, either an email address or a phone number, we will contact you back to talk specifically about a question that you may have. Uh, also looking at that that will go into additional uh, Q&A as we continue to build this over time. It's, a, it's available uh, online tonight. Uh, some of those questions and some of the answers that we have as we've built out um, those themes. So that's sort of the, uh, um, the format at the end uh, of the presentation. We're gonna hang around, uh, those of us that are here, to answer uh, any questions that you might have individually for us. We'll be glad to do that. Um, just make sure you, you spent your time, you're here. We want to make sure that you are heard. And so uh, we will uh, do that. Uh, once we have all of this, you know, completed tonight, hopefully we've addressed your concerns. We've given you the information that, that you need. Um, also, um, I know that every family situation is different whether you have one child or six children all right every situation is different and and so when we develop this proposal all right we know that change is tough and some of those changes do impact families we've tried to mitigate this as much as possible based on some of the feedback that we've received um, but you know understanding that Anytime we make a, a change in our system, there are going to be routines that are impacted in your families. And we, we really want to try and, and limit those as much as possible. But please know, um, and I, I believe that after the presentation, uh, please know that we have some serious transportation issues in this county uh, that we need to address. And we need to address sooner rather than uh, later. Uh, so during the, the first five months uh, that I've been here, I spent the better part of three of those months in our schools, uh, all 19 schools for the entire day, uh, talking to students, talking to teachers, talking to staff members, getting on buses, talking with our uh, custodian, uh, custodial staff, talking to a cafeteria. I also did three community forums, one at Pender Lee School, one at here at Heidi Trask and one at Topsail High School to hear from the community. And I asked three questions to all of these groups. What do you love about Pender County Schools? What do you not want changed in Pender County Schools, especially as a new superintendent coming in? And then the third question I asked was, what does need to change? What do we need to improve? And all of that data was collected. We took notes during all of these sessions, uh, met with faculty and staff. We took notes, students took notes. We compiled it all. The number one issue in Pender County Schools was our transportation system. That ranked number one. Number two was higher teacher pay. So make that make sense. In 24 years, I've never seen teachers rank something other than higher teacher pay. 
So that alone tells you the magnitude of the situation that, that we're facing right now. So digging into what that, okay, transportation. What is it about transportation? That's the issue, trying to learn. Based on that information, you can see here a list of bullets that include what the teachers, what the students, what the community felt were issues with our transportation system at, at this time. Students arriving late to school all right, due to shortages. As a superintendent, putting the classroom first, putting students first, their academic, uh, their academic progress first is important and it should be number one. How do we get students to school on time so that our teachers can have more opportunities with those students? Every minute counts. Students having to arrive early due to scheduled doubles. Running double routes with the same bus is the norm in Pender County Schools. Uh, a little bit uh, later, um, Mr. Mike Taylor, who's uh, our chief of operations, as well as uh, Brandon Smith, will kind of go into a little bit more of those details about the numbers of doubles that we run, but we do run doubles as a standard procedure in our school system. And so you'll hear the statistics when students are, arri are arriving 40 to 50 minutes early to sit in the cafeteria because teachers haven't even gotten to the school yet so that that bus can go back out on the road, pick up the next load of students and bring them back. Uh, that's an issue. Or staying another 30, 40, even sometimes longer, especially if we have to run a triple route, 50 or an hour long after school on a routine before we're able to get those students home after school. That was another issue. Stu students having to wait after a dismissal. Next, K-8 sharing buses. A lot of parents, a lot of teachers. Can we separate elementary and middle school because of discipline, because of bullying, those type of things that are happening on the buses? Instructional assistance, recruitment in classrooms. Do you know that we have 36 vacant teacher assistant jobs in Pender County schools? That's significant. That means less teachers in our classroom working with our students. Why? Because when they get ready to be hired, once we tell them that it's mandatory that you drive a bus, take my name off the list. That's what we hear. I do not want to drive a bus. And so that's a, that's a fact. We have people waiting in the wings, willing to work inside of our classrooms, but because of that policy, because of that rule, in order to have enough bus drivers, that's what happens. That's the, those, these are the issues that we're facing. Instructional assistance out of the classroom due to driving the buses. Not only do those buses get there later to drop off students, but those instructional assistants are also driving those buses that get to school late. Then they have to leave the classroom early in order to get on the bus and then drive students home. We are shortchanging our students education day in and day out by running some of these routines. Additional non-instructional uh, uh, supervision before and after school. Well, who's watching the students when they get to school that early? Who's watching them after school? That, uh, those are teachers. Because instructional assistants are usually driving buses, so it's teachers. So instead of doing lesson plans, instead of doing prepping for the next day, they are watching those students for 30, 40, 50 minutes or longer. Just depends on, on the day. So these are some of the issues and concerns that were shared with me over the first five months of, of me being in Pender County Schools. And, and lo and behold, when, when talking to transportation and in our operations department, they have been studying this issue since October and looking to how are we gonna solve this problem with the resources that we have all right, and the manpower that we have. And so out of this comes the idea for a three-tiered bus system, a system that many districts around our state are already utilizing that we are not. 
And so I'm going to turn it over um, to uh, Mr. Mike Taylor, who's the, our chief of operations, who's going to continue on with the uh, presentations from uh, his lens. So thank you. Good evening, and thanks again for being here. Uh, we greatly appreciate your time and expect um, that you will provide us feedback that will help us continue to refine our operational practices in our district to better serve our citizens as well as our students. Going back over the list, um, I just want to capture a couple of things regarding those items shared by Dr. Breedlove. Bullet number two, students having to arrive early to school due to scheduled doubles. Currently, we have 823 students who are assigned to the 12 buses that are scheduled each day for a double. Those students begin arriving at schools at 6.40 a.m., which is 50 minutes prior to when they are to report to class. So almost one hour each day, our students who don't have to be in class are sitting in the cafeterias being monitored by uh, instructional staff in some capacity. Uh, Cape Fear schools specifically have students arriving at 650 to 655 each morning. Um, and again, waiting 25 to 35 minutes before they can report to classrooms. K-8 sharing of buses leading to discipline and bullying. Much of this conversation took place um, my first school year here, 2018, 2019 timeframe. We looked at the ability to separate those grade levels using the buses that we have and the current bell structure. That was a significant impact on the operational services because we were going to have to add numerous buses on both sides of the school district in order to transport the same number of kids in the same time frame. And then of course, down at the bottom, the instructional assistance recruitment for classrooms, that seems to be the number one reason that's repeated in all of our schools regarding the ability to hire more instructional assistants. So as Dr. Breedlove pointed out, recognizing last school year, or this school year, sorry, we have grown 600 students since last school year approximately 60% of our students, it's actually a little more right now, are riding our buses each year, are riding our buses. So out of that 600 student increase from last school year, we have approximately 360 students riding the buses. If you do the math, the ability to transport students, elementary students is K through five, 72 students. But when we combine K-8, we lose 12 potential student transports because you can only put 60, and that's our biggest buses, New C2 Thomases. Um, they can carry 60 K-8 students. So we immediately lose the ability to transport 12 students by having doubles established. Moving on to the next section. Our goal was to develop a comprehensive multi-tiered bell schedule that supports and promotes an atmosphere of academic excellence for all students. Again, getting students to school on time and getting them back home on time. Protect our instructional time by ensuring safe and on-time transportation services. Address the significant bus driver monitor personnel shortage due to and increase the employment of full-time bus drivers and monitors. Obviously, we lose the opportunity to hire bus drivers. Some of our routes are one hour, two hours, but then that person who is driving that route can spend seven hours away from school and come back for another one or two hour bus route. That doesn't qualify them for significant income or additional support with benefits such as health insurance and things of that nature. And the last thing, we always want to support the district K uh, pre-K-2 drop-off procedure, which requires a responsible adult or sibling to be at every bus stop in the afternoon when we drop students off who are second grade, second grade or below. Next, 
Our goal is to eliminate the current need for the established doubles. As I stated, we have kids getting to school much earlier than they have to be, and they're staying much later than they should. We want to reassign the supervision of bus drivers and monitors to the transportation department and take that away from the school because we're utilizing these same personnel for all three grade levels. It gives us that opportunity to make sure that we have subs in place each and every time there's an absence. And obviously we always want to improve our transportation efficiency model to ensure the best use of our current funding. The state transportation model for as long as I can remember, it's almost 20 years old if I'm not mistaken, um, is based on our ability to transport students as efficiently as possible. That means transporting the largest number of students using the fewest number of buses driving the fewest miles. That's the concept that, that a lot of people are questioning about the efficiency model. As mentioned by Dr. Breedlove, a three-tiered system is used all across the state, especially in medium and large school districts. It's the only way to continue to increase the efficiency or maintain the efficiency above 90% and still get the kids to and from school. And it is based on the ability for human resources or human capital, as well as the capital expenses. New buses have to be purchased by the school system they currently are approximately $130,000 each. Some of the data we use to make these decisions. The Topsail DOT study results that were started back in the 18-19 school year, uh, we received those back in the late fall. The number one recommendation they had was to stagger the elementary, middle, and high school take-in times and dismissal times at the Topsail Middle, Topsail Annandale, and Topsail High School campus. That is the number one recommendation to alleviate the traffic at St. John's and Jenkins, it's Jenkins and 17. I, did, I couldn't remember Jenkins. Um, additionally, we used a third party vendor to take all of our data, analyze that data, and complete the study. Edulog is the name of that company. And we use the comparison of the current data to our proposed data, and again, in order to make that informed decision. That's how we came up with the bus um, impact times that were spoken of. Those are the proposed times. Um, the Pender High feeder pattern, you'll see the first five or six schools there. They are not impacted by this three-tier model other than a few of the middle uh, elementary and middle schools swapped because they share buses and because their attendance zone is so large there's no way that we could actually run a three-tier system without starting school at 7 and the last school taking in around 9 or 9 30. It is a very large attendance zone. So those are the proposed bell times they've been out there for your review. Our recommended changes with those bell times. We believe that it will reduce the impact, traffic impact, and align with the DOT recommendation of multi-tiering the elementary and middle schools for the topsail feeder pattern. We also believe, based on staggering the times, that we could reduce the traffic impact at Cape Fear Middle School, Elementary School, and Pila. We have already constructed a new road around to the back of the school for the middle school parents and Pila. Has it helped? Has it eliminated the need for traffic improvements? No. <laughs> Some, I would just say that there are still a lot of traffic issues there that we can continue to address. Um, it, it has improved, I agree, but it's not solved the problem. Uh, eliminate the established doubles for the topsail high feeder pattern and trash feeder pattern. As I mentioned earlier, 823 students in the morning and over 900 students in the afternoon are impacted by these doubles. It does increase the AM pickup times for the middle schools that are listed approximately 7 to 16 minutes. 
There is a reduction in the number of TAs driving buses by providing a window to hire more full-time drivers. Additionally, we believe that we can remove five buses from our fleet and absorb those 12 doubles. Improves the overall efficiency, which I've already mentioned, and it promotes a more sustainable approach to our transportation model. So for example, I have an efficiency equation, and I hope you can follow with me. K-8, 60 students at approximately traveling 20 miles. Nine through 12, which would be a two-tier system. 48 students traveling approximately 30 miles. We have a total potential transport of 108 students at 50 miles. If you utilize the 3.02 mileage rate for transporting those 108 students, it's approximately $1.39.815 per trip. If we move to a three-tier model, we can put 72 students on a K-5 bus. The, the attendance zone is almost half. For example, Cape Fear Elementary and Rocky Point Elementary. Those feeder patterns, are, those attendance zones are smaller because they all feed Cape Fear Middle. And then all of Cape Fear Middle obviously comes to, to Heidi Trask. If we split those students, K-5, we can put 72 students on the bus and run approximately 10 or 12 miles. We can put the same 60 students on the bus for 6-8, running 20 miles. And then for high school, 9 through 12 is 48 students at 20 miles. 180 students and 50 miles. If you do the math with a $3.02 calculation, we have reduced the cost of transporting that student to 83.888 cents per trip. That's a significant impact each and every day based on the number of kids that are actually riding the bus. Now, some of our students, for example, live in Maple Hill here at Heidi Trask, and those students will not be on a three-tier system. Those buses will then ride, drive an a middle school route and then leave and go to Maple Hill to start bringing the students back this direction. So if you do that calculation, K-5 students, 72 students, uh, 9, 12, 48, so 120 students and approximately 40 plus miles. It's about a dollar and six cents per student per trip. Again, we've still reduced the cost per trip per student every single day. And that's morning and afternoon. We also shared a link to a Google form to collect more information, as Dr. Breedlove pointed out, uh, because people were emailing us and calling us, we felt it was appropriate to get a link out there so everyone could respond. These are the respondents, 822 parents and 60 uh, uh, staff members. These are the concerns by feeder pattern. I don't see the thing up there, but I does anybody want to guess what 703 is? Oh, that's the feeder pattern. That's not the one I want. So the feeder pattern 703 is um, Topsail, 106 is Heidi Trask, and 73 is Pender. This is the one I wanted. <laughs> and it does have the concern up there. So if you look at the areas of concern, there are three primary. Other up there is also including one or more of the, the other three. Some had no concerns, um, and there were some, you know, some, some people made comments like, this is what we did in my old system, and I, you know, we'll, it's all out there, but I wanted you to see the three major concerns that we, were raised, and I believe there's an opportunity there for us to continue to explore ways to um, make it palatable to all of our stakeholders. Traffic is not going to increase. Traffic is going to be reduced, especially at the Topsail and Cape Fear campuses. It, DOT has done their studies, Edgelog has done their studies, and if you just think about removing half of the student campus traffic, you have to have a decrease in the traffic. Childcare, Several people were concerned about having to drop off siblings 
if you have a middle school student and an elementary student. A lot of people were concerned about dropping off the middle school student, having to go back home, and then bring the elementary student. As I shared, or tried to share, I can't remember if I said it clearly enough, but we have arranged with our PACES program here in our school system to provide up to one hour of childcare without cost to parents at the campuses that are impacted. Surf City, Middle, and elementary, Cape Fear Middle and Elementary, and the Topsail Annandale, Topsail Middle campuses. So we, what you would do is drop off your middle school student on time, then go to the elementary school if they're siblings. Again, this is protected just for siblings because those are the parents who need this childcare. You can drop off your elementary student and childcare will, will be provided. Um, and the last time, the last item, which is the largest, most middle school parents are worried about the start time of the school day. This is something that we will continue to explore. There are opportunities there for us. Um, a lot of school systems do start at 7 o'clock. If that's not necessarily the direction we're going to go, then I'm just asking if we were to start earlier, not that early, could we make it work? for all of our families. You know, we have to think about the future regarding our transportation. Every school on the east side of this district is currently at or above capacity. We as a school system have no control over that. We can't control that, but we can control the transportation because that's within our means. Yes, there are some opportunities to continue to improve what we're doing and some of it may not be perfect but we want to continue to work to improve those services for our kids we want our students to be in the building on time each and every day we want our students to get taken home after the end of the school day there are parents who are expecting those kids but oftentimes have to wait longer for them to get home some of the proposed solutions I, I did add, move the high school to the earliest time. This would be an incredible feat for our high school students because first of all, many of their schedules are already aligned with the community college. Secondly, those of our citizens and stakeholders who shared the American Pediatric Society of Pediatrics, those recommended start times are for 13 to 19 year old adolescents or 18 year old adolescents. That is our primary high school time, our high school age group. Move elementary to the earliest. Again, if we move the elementary to the earliest time slot, that means they get out first. There's the potential for us not to be able to comply with the policy that we've created to protect the safety of our youngest students at the end of the school day. We do not want our pre-K-2 students getting off the bus to an empty home or empty driveway, et cetera. Move middle school to the high school. We already tried that. We've gone away from that, um, especially at the Topsail campus um, because of the bullying and other things that were listed regarding the K-8 sharing the buses. We cannot allow those grade levels, cannot allow ourselves to go back and get into something we've already corrected once. Redistricting the system, again, if you redistrict our, our, dis, our school system, we would have to go all the way to Highway 17 to get 52 Heidi Trash students. Is that going to help Topsail, who is 350 students over capacity? not significant enough and now your Heidi Trash students not only are our Maple Hill students on the bus for almost two hours a larger number of those kids would be on the bus for two hours so you know redistricting the system at, the, at this stage of the game is is is, is much more exploratory um, much more of an exploratory effort that would have to be done and the last thing is paying our drivers more we would all love to see our drivers get paid more the reality is we are above the state minimum and many of our drivers actually make at or above the state maximum. 
Paying drivers more increases the operation, local operational expenses um, for our district. Our recommendations do not negatively impact us financially, which is something that all taxpayers, I would hope, would embrace. We're trying to define a solution that continues to utilize the same resources or even less to maximize the services. And that's just saying what I just said. <laughs> I just, we have to find ways to continue to improve our services with same or less resources, human capital as well as financial capital. The last slide, thank you so much again. I appreciate you allowing me the opportunity to share with you this evening. The process of trying to make these recommendations uh, or, or making recommendations to try and improve our services. Um, many of you were given an index card. If you do not have an index card, we will get you one uh, and we invite you to please add your name, a phone number or email address, however you would prefer that we communicate back with you. Uh, and share that question with us if it has not been answered tonight. If there are additional components of a question that you would like us, us to entertain, please write it on there. But as, also, as Dr. Breedlove said, we're here. We want to, uh, you know, this is an opportunity for you to come and share with us if there are personal needs that we can continue to take more information into consideration as, as we make decisions for the betterment of, of our district. Yes, sir. Thank you all for coming, and again, we'll hang around, and um, if you need us, would like to speak with us. Certainly. So, um, yeah, that's, that's our presentation. That's our, our why um, with the issues that we have, and certainly um, when looking at uh, the solutions in that with the three-tiered proposal that we have, um, one of those, you know, things to me it stood out was the number of uh, respondents that we had that the time was the issue all right a 7 a.m. start time and you know working with our Board of Education trying to come up with a solution I just want to understand that if we move let's say 15 minutes or 20 minutes and go with a 715 start time or a 720 start time on the front end what does that do to the back end? That means our high schools that get out at 3.30, 3.35 would then not get out until about 3.50, which is doable, but it does delay athletics, it does uh, delay uh, job responsibilities of our high schools. So we are, you know, we're trapped in this, this sort of window here that certainly an option is to move the start time to 7.15 to 7.20, but at the end time unless we impact the classroom all right the end time is um, is going to be impacted as well as the schedule that we already have set up with you know at Topsail High School alone has over 300 students taking Cape Fear Community College courses it will limit the number of courses that they can take at the community college because the schedule that has been built over years of work with the community college is set the way it is um, so I uh, just want us to, to keep that in, in mind. Um, certainly look forward to uh, our continual work with our Board of Education as we work to try and find a solution to, as you can see, many, many issues when it comes to our transportation um, situation here in Pender County Schools. Thank you all so much for being here. Like I said uh, earlier, we will stay around and be able to answer any questions that you have. If you want to write a question on the note card, please feel free to do that and we will uh, be able to um, call you back or uh, respond back to you in some way with an email. I just wanted to add one other thing. Um, Mr. Macon, can you please show the web page? There, there have already been numerous questions that have been shared uh, with us regarding uh, the three-tier proposal. And I want to show you, this is our main web page. Up the right-hand corner, you have the three-tier bus system. If you scroll down, you'll see a feedback question form the, where we got the data from earlier. But additionally, you'll see there's the form that many of you may have already completed. 
But if you'll scroll down a little bit further, you'll see the questions that we've already been asked and resp more, resp more detailed respondents than what I provided today. Uh, but there, there's a lot of information there. Please feel free to uh, look at that as well. Thank you. Yeah, so with this, uh, yes, sir, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Smith. Uh, so our, our cabinet that's here, if you want to stick around and, and talk to us, of course, you have Mike Taylor, uh, Chief of Operations. You have Kevin Taylor, uh, who is our um, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources and Accountability. We have Dr. Sawyer, who's our Chief Academic Officer. We have Lisa Nallen, who's our CFO, uh, that are all here um, to also speak with you so that um, we can get you uh, out of here in a timely manner and make sure that we have any questions or concerns that you have individually that we can take back with us. So thank you all very much.